Pozdravljene Slovenske akademije znanosti in umetnosti. Welcome, dear guests. Um, welcome to Slovenia, welcome to the Slovenian Academy of Sciences. I would like to greet first the president of the Academy of Sciences of Slovenia, uh, Mr. Bight. And we have here today in the presence uh, Her Excellency, the British Ambassador to Slovenia, uh, Sophie Honey. Welcome. And we also have His Excellency, the Ambassador of the Czech, Czech Republic to Slovenia, Mr. Juar Chmiel. Welcome. And uh, I would like to greet all uh, members of academies, not only from here, but all around the world. And of course, those who actually traveled a long, long distance to come here today to discuss uh, issues related to the other brain. But before we do that, I'd like to welcome uh, uh, Professor, Professor Bain to this podium and later on. Dear participants of the conference, dear guests, dear colleagues, I wish to start this opening address with a few words about our academy. The first academy on the Slovenian territory was founded over 300 years ago. This was the century when the most ancient and most important European academies were established. As an important legacy of this first academy is the Baroque design of the old city that our respected guests will have the chance to enjoy during the stay in Ljubljana. The motto of this first academy was Nobis et alis operosi, which means industrious for ourselves and for others. This motto remains as the guidance also for the present Slovenian Academy of Sciences and Arts. The main task of the Academy is providing scientific advice to politics in the fields of science, education and culture in general. We are organizing numerous symposia, roundtables and conferences on different topical subjects. The conclusions of these events represent the advices to politics and are also disseminated to wider public through the media and our web page. The Slovenian Academy was established 80 years ago with a clear goal to provide solid grounds to the Slovenian science. Also today, the Academy pays special attention to the problems of science. We are experiencing considerable brain drain. The mechanisms of bringing the young scientists back to home country are of special concern for Slovenian Academy. Women scientists are another particularly vulnerable group in science as the time of their highest research creativity coincides with starting a family. In order to promote research ethics and draw attention to cases of research misconduct, we are preparing the foundation of a committee for integrity in science. The use of Slovenian and English language in science and in particular in the universities, represents an important statement of our academy. Apart from science, frequently discussed subjects are as various as human rights of immigrants, hate speech, aging, wood and forests, artificial intelligence, and robotics. We are in particular delighted when organizing an event with important international participation, such as today's The Other Brain. I wish you all a productive meeting and to our guests a pleasant stay in Ljubljana. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you very much for your words. As this event is actually a collaboration, uh, of course, an innovation uh, project from the British Embassy, I would like to welcome uh, and, uh, um, the Ambassador of the British uh, 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 Embassy, Sonny Honey, to actually address this audience. Um, thank you so much, uh, Robert, and thank you very much to um, the Slovene Academy of Sciences and Arts and Professor Byte for hosting us um, today. Um, it's great to be here. I know that this conference has been jointly organised by your academy, um, also by the UK Science and Innovation Network and the Czech International Clinical Research Centre. And it's great to see and to meet on the way in so many esteemed scientists from 
the UK, from the Czech Republic and um, Slovenia. Um, I understand that you are going to be reviewing the biology, pathology and physiology of astroglia, a type of neuroglia in neurodegeneration. Um, I studied science, I studied physics before I um, became a diplomat, but I don't pretend to know a lot about astroglia. Um, but what I do know, and what I wanted to share with you, is, is two things. And the first of those is that this is a really, really um, important area of research, um, given the impact that diseases like Alzheimer's have in so many of our societies and on individual families, um, not just in the developing world, but also, not just in the developed world, but also a very big impact um, in the developing world. I understand that over 60% of those affected uh, with Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative diseases live in middle, to, in low to middle income countries, Africa and East Asia. So this is a really, really important area of research that you're working on. Um, the second thought I wanted to share with you is that international collaboration is absolutely critical to make um, to make progress in any area like this. I don't think I need to tell you that as scientists. I think that international collaboration comes very naturally and runs through the veins of scientists, at least all of the scientists that, that I know. Um, as it happens, my stepdad is a, is a Czech immunologist who um, came, who was on, on holiday in the UK in 1968 um, during Prague Spring, and uh, he decided to stay. And it was his research partners in the UK who he'd known from the institute where he worked in Prague, who helped him find a job with the Wellcome Institute, later with King's and Guy's Hospital, and really helped him settle um, in the UK. So um, I'm basically used to a, a wonderful and constant flow of uh, research partners, former PhD students, through our house, gathered through years of international cooperation in science. He finally retired properly last year in his 80s, but still, whenever I go home, there is a former PhD student, an international collaborator from all over the world who is always turning up for supper. So what I know is that um, international collaboration is absolutely key to science, but one of the other beauties of it is that it's not just about advancing scientific research and knowledge. There are also a lot of um, great friendships to be built along the way. So I'm very glad to see this happening today. Um, this sort of spirit of partnership um, in science is very much alive between the UK and Slovenia. Um, as an example, um, something like 40% of Slovenia's life science publications have a British co-author. Um, and there are many UK researchers with deep admiration for and close ties with Slovene counterparts. And um, great examples of research collaboration in Slovenes who've made the UK their home, like Jane Ule, who is here today, I think. Where's Jane? Is Jane here? Perhaps not. Perhaps we were expecting him to be here. But anyway, it's great that he, he is an example of someone who's made the UK his home. Um, and the same is also true um, between the UK and the Czech Republic, a great deal of scientific collaboration going on. So it's wonderful to see that brought together in this um, tripartite group today. So by way of conclusion, I would like to thank the Academy of Sciences and Arts um, here in Slovenia for hosting this conference. I wish you a really fruitful couple of days, um, both in pooling your knowledge uh, and research and advancing understanding of this area, which is so important, but also, I hope, as scientists and as a network of um, researchers continuing to build friendships that will hold you well in the future. Thank you. Many thanks for these uh, encouraging words, and I would like to invite uh, the Ambassador of the Czech Republic, Mr. Juhl. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. I am honored to speak uh, in front of such a distinguished uh, audience of scientists, and it's a little bit of my homecoming because uh, 
I was working up till 1992 in Slovak Academy of Sciences, uh, but a little bit different field. I was, I'm Africanist, I have BA, MA, PhD studies in, uh, in African studies, and I also spent one year in School of Oriental and African Studies in London. So again, a little bit of homecoming. As an ambassador of the Czech Republic, I would like to congratulate the organizers uh, who brought together such a great number of uh, scientists, uh, researchers in this very important area. One of the organizers, the Czech Center and University Hospital in Brno, ICRC Center, I have personally visited in October and uh, honestly, what I saw, I was really astonished. Uh, their capabilities and work represent really the top research in this field. The applied and the clinical research uh, are one of the highest priorities of the Czech government. Uh, and uh, we consider it as uh, very important. For example, the last uh, decade, the funds have been increased uh, by 100%. Uh, and last year, the Czech government gave to the research 4 billion euros, uh, which is the highest amount uh, which was given during these years. I myself was nearly for two years working as an international advisor to the technology, technology agency of the Czech Republic, which is a great a grant agency specialized in the field of applied research and innovation. And therefore, I know how important it is to join the forces. As the knowledge became more and more complex, the international teams with global reach are more and more needed joint publications, international conferences, scientific hubs, research, and shared clinical premises are one of the highest value added of collaboration among the states. Therefore, the scientific cooperation is one of the key priorities of my agenda as ambassador in Slovenia. And I will do all my best to enhance it as much as possible during my mandate. I've already visited several ministers here in Slovenia, and I'm glad to say that they were on the opinion to join. Every publication, patent, or cli uh, clinical result may save human rights, human, human lives. Uh, for my conclusion, uh, I wish you all the best, and I'm looking forward to meet you uh, tomorrow, sometimes after, uh, after the noon, to, for the degustation of the Czech wine and also Bechlerovka. So I wish you all the best and looking forward to meet you. Thank you for your attention. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Ambassador. So now the time is to actually come to the other brain. I just want to give you a, just a quick sort of uh, outline of what we are kind of, uh, what we are aiming for. So um, the brain of the human, um, you know, consists of many parts, and what we see the the most important part of the brain is the neocortex that actually uh, represents 80% of the brain mass. So it's about one kilogram. But uh, what is interesting about this is that in fact the um, the number of cells that are neurons in this neocortex is, is a minority, only 20%. So there are four times more non-neuronal cells in the neocortex. Now, <clears throat> this has been some, somehow um, uh, over, overlooked scientifically, <laughs> and now we know that uh, the other part of the brain, the other brain, these cells that actually uh, are representing a non-neuronal part, are also neuroglia, and these neuroglia cells uh, you know, form the white matter, like uh, oligodendrocytes, and then we have astrocytes that actually communicate in the gray matter and also in the white matter, but in the gray matter mainly with synapses and blood vessels. We also have microglia. Now, although these cells have been actually uh, somehow um, identified uh, at the middle of 19th century, it has been basically uh, considered that these cells are support passive glue and also etymology of uh, glia comes not only from Greek but also from all uh, church Slavic languages from glina meaning that actually we keep the brain together now and and of course these cells have been subservient to neurons and so this was the neuron centric century and now we know that in fact these cells are really important in determining the plasticity of the brain memory forming they, in fact, are energy-providing cells. The brain consumes 
like fifths of uh, uh, blood glucose at rest, although the brain is only 2% of the body mass. So it's energy cons consuming sort of uh, um, uh, organ. And of course, if uh, energy uh, consuming organs are somehow um, uh, prone to actually defects. So keeping the engine running means we have to maintain it properly. And therefore nowadays, uh, astro uh, glial cells are considered to be homeostatic cells. A derangement of homeostasis means development of disease. Now, so we are coming to a gliocentric century. To actually to give you an idea that this is actually uh, happening, this is the number of papers published in the field of astroglia and oligodendrocytes as a function of years. These are, of course, hits of papers published in the field of single cells, genetically modified animals, and now drug targets. You can see that, in fact, we have a significant number of the last 20, 30 years of these publications reaching perhaps a steady state, meaning that the field has matured and that, in fact, we should actually be aiming at understanding the disease, not only on the, on the ground of uh, um, neurons being the targets, but also uh, neuroglia being the targets. So we hope that there's going to be a shift in the drug discovery field from not being a neurocentric paradigm to perhaps uh, a, a paradigm that actually includes sort of uh, gliocentric views as well. Now this brings me to um, the um, end of my opening and I would like to, without further ado, invite uh, the first speaker, uh, Arthur Bart, who has actually uh, been the first uh, co-author of the, of the uh, textbook uh, entitled Neuroglia, together with Alexei Verkraski, who unfortunately uh, you know, couldn't make it today. Arthur, the podium is yours. Yes.